In this video, I will show you a way that you can organize your library and all the resources and books that our department has given you. So in the previous videos I've made, I walked you through the process of making a library for a group of kids so that they can see the books that you have for them. So here's that kindergarten skills block library that I made where I took all of the cycle five books and I made copies for my kindergartners so that I'm ready to go for my lesson. Once students have worked in these books and are finished, let's say it's the end of the week and you're finished with cycle five, you're gonna wanna think of ways you can save the work they've done in these books to create a digital portfolio. So there are a couple choices. If Louisa has finished this book and she has done all the pages and you want to save that entire book full of her work, then you can move her book into a different library. Let me show you what I mean. Um, I have my kindergarten library right here full of their books, but then I might want to make a portfolio for all of my students. And I do realize you guys have a lot of students. Sometimes your caseload is up to 80 kids. It is up to you if you want to make 80 libraries, but I do recommend you find a place to house the work they're doing. Because Book Creator lets you have unlimited amount of libraries, I personally think that's the best way to go as opposed to making 80 you know, manila folders in your filing cabinet or um, 80 folders in Google Drive. I think this would be an easier way, but whichever way works for you, go for it. This is just one idea. So for the purpose of time, I just, I did a few already and I'm gonna create one more library for Catherine because I have Jose, Kevin, Luisa, and one more student is Catherine. So I'm gonna show you, I'll create a library. I'll name it Catherine's Portfolio. Hit create library and there they are. They're all ready to go. There's nothing in them just yet. Maybe I'm just starting it off, but they're there ready for me to move books into them. So let's pretend I've taught my lessons. I've taught this cycle and I'm all done. And I want to move Louisa's entire book into her portfolio. I could do that by clicking the book options. And I want to move the whole book. I don't want to copy it because I want to clean up this library and get it ready for cycle six. So I'm going to click move. I'm going to select her portfolio. It is now in her portfolio right there. Okay. And it's out of this library and I moved it from here into her portfolio. I could do the same thing for Kevin go to the book options and I'm going to click move to the library. I'm going to find Kevin's portfolio and move it out. And I'll do the same for Catherine, move it out of here, put it in her portfolio and go ahead and move it out. Okay. So now we have Jose. I'm going to do the same for him. I'm going to move it to his portfolio. And now I've kind of cleaned up my library and I still have cycle five. You can now delete this book if you're finished with it. If you want to save it for yourself, maybe you did some work in here and you want to keep it, that's fine. You, you can do that as well. I would just move it into your My Books, you know, which is that original library that's only yours and yours alone. If you want to do that, you can do that and then moving it out here. And now it's a clean slate for the next week when you're about to start your next cycle. So you're gonna go to the skills block that um, our department made. You're gonna get ready for cycle six and you're gonna copy it 
you can't move it um, because y'all won't have editing rights. You'll only have the option to copy. You're going to copy it right back into that um, library that you're using with your kids, which I called kinder, kindergarten skills block. And there it is ready to go. And you're left with your original that you can either delete if you'd like, because you really don't need it anymore. If you really want to save it, you can move it into your My Books. When you delete a book, it'll kind of make sure you're, you're sure you want to delete, goes away. If you changed your mind and you realized, oh no, I deleted the wrong book, I deleted Catherine's instead of mine, that's okay. You can get that book back by going right here to this drop down. You go to Recently Deleted, and there it is. Okay, you can go and hit these three buttons and hit restore. And that book will come right back. The only thing I do have to caution you is if when you delete a book, it will stay in this recently deleted for two weeks, I believe. Yes, I think it's two weeks. So it's not going to save it forever, but it will save it for a short time. So the same goes with if a student you give them collaboration and they accidentally delete their own book, you can go as the teacher and restore that book for that child. All right. This suggestion is here because my fear is if you keep adding cycle five, cycle six, cycle seven to this library, before you know it, it's going to get so cluttered and full of books that it might confuse both yourself and the students. So kind of cleaning up the books once you're finished with the project or the cycle book or whatever you're working on and having a place to house them like a library, a digital portfolio for those kids is really helpful for organization purposes. So see, there are their books right there for them. And then you're clearing out your own library each week. If you don't want to do this, that's fine as well. Um, I did go ahead and make the cover of all the cycles different. Just in case, let's say you have one kid who's in cycle five in this group in kindergarten, and maybe you have another kindergartner who's in cycle seven, and we're going to put it in our library. And maybe Catherine is in cycle seven, but I might have another student. If this is, let's pretend this is Jose's book. And Jose is in cycle six. So at least it'll kind of help you out to have the different covers <laughs> so that you don't get confused. So that's a possibility too. And again, when they're done and they're finished with that book, I would move it out of there and into that student's portfolio. And then that way, when you're ready for the next group of books, your library doesn't get cluttered with a million books in them and you can save the books that they have done as a digital portfolio. An additional next step that I personally would take if these are their digital portfolios is I would start dating them. So let's look at Louisa's. Let's say Louisa did this book um, in the week of October uh, 7th. I would go here under comics, the textbook feature, there's a caption, and I would just enter the date. So let's say she did it the week of the 6th of October. I'll put the date in here. Let me make that a little bit bigger just so that I can see it a little bit better. And I would date it so that I know when this book was completed. If you want to, you can lock it and hold it in place. And let's say that this is the next week. So I would do the same thing, go to comics or whichever cat, you know, however you want to add the text. And maybe this is the week of the, eight, um, the 18th or the 19th. So I'd put 10, 
2020. Make that a little bit bigger for myself so that I can see it when I need it. Lock it into place. And now my digital portfolio for Louisa is really coming together. I can keep an archive and the dates are right there in the corner for me. So that let's say I have a parent conference or a meeting where I want to really display how she's grown so I can see how she did towards the beginning of the year and how she's progressing towards the end of the year. Another great feature is that you could have classroom teachers or any teacher who's supporting that child be part of this portfolio and view it as well. All you would need to do is share the invite code with those teachers so that they can view this library. And once they've joined, you'll see their name under authors. And you can even promote them to be a co-teacher onto this library with you if they really want to go in and help you maybe add things as well to the portfolios for book creator books that they're creating. You guys can actually work together and create a portfolio together. Um, I don't have anybody in this library, so I, I'm going to have to show you from another library. In this library, I go down to this blue arrow and I look to see who are the members of this library and the way to promote a teacher is you find their name, click the three dots and click on promote teacher. But be very careful if the teacher signs in just by mistake as a student instead of a teacher, when you click promote teacher, you're going to see this. The teacher is signed in with a student account. So if they've done that, you just have to go back and help the teacher see that instead of clicking student, they're going to sign in with their Google account, but they have to click teacher um, on the tab, which looks like this. If I sign out, they're hitting this and signing in with Google. Teachers have to actually take this extra step and click teacher sign in and sign in with Google for them to be signed in correctly. And once they do that, then you'll have no problem promoting them um, as co-teacher. That is just one idea of a way to organize your work for your students. I also encourage you to join the CMS library. Um, on our videos, I am trying to blur <laughs> any place on our videos that have our codes because we are publishing these videos to YouTube, but you guys have access to this library full of books, of ideas, and other teachers are adding to them all their great resources that they're creating, and we would love for you to add to this so that we can all really collaborate and help each other out in our work. And so... If you need the code for this, just ask your L resource teacher and um, they can give that to you. And also reach out to us anytime you want to give us feedback about these resources or need any support.